on December 4th, 1939. Because I started out by myself, I didn't have parents to really take, nurture me, take care of me. I was always taking care of everybody else. Because <laughs> I like I liked what I did. I'm a medical assistant, so I like what I did. The reason why, I, I, I think I have, the people who are in on, uh, if this fixed income, their money's not going to go as far as if I was going to work because you only get a limited amount of money. And so it's going, it's going to disappear really fast. So when I have my bills, it, it, it's not enough to cover all the, all the things that needs to be done in the household. Heating, the, uh, the light bills. The uh, gas, and uh, the utilities of paying rent, and buying food. Yes, I'm on medication because I'm diabetic. Just stretch your money to what you have as far as you can. As much as you can do the best you can, that's all you can do. And leave some things out that you don't have to have. And do, you know, necessity things. Make sure you get those things first. Hello everyone and welcome to the Caregiving Doctor Show today. I'm your host, Dr. Clarissa Fell Smith, and I have another great show planned today and a great guest, and I'm excited about this topic because I'm gonna learn a lot as well. Joining me today is Jay Jones. Jay Jones is here. She's a licensed graduate social worker, but she's also the Jefferson County Office of Senior Citizen Services, what we call SHIP Coordinator, State Health Insurance Program coordinator and we're going to be talking about Medicare, uh, this health insurance program, part A, part B, how do you qualify. If you are a family caregiver, you can't go anywhere. Where are you going to go? You've got to get this information. Thanks for joining me today on the Caregiving Doctor Show. How are you? I'm doing great today. Glad to have you here. You are loaded with information. You had yes. so much information. I was like, okay, where do we start? Where do we start? The st what do you do as a state um, SHIP program coordinator, what do you do every day? Well, basically, we, we advocate and we offer unbiased insurance counseling for people 65 and, and older. Uh, we also offer information to people with disabilities who are 55 and older to see if they qualify for state insurance programs, such as Medicare, Part A and B and D. A, B and D, start with Medicare a. Okay. How do you qualify for Medicare A? Okay. What is it, rather? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to back up a little bit. Uh, a lot of people know Medicare as the, you know, they have the original red, white, and blue card. Okay. Okay. So with that card, typically once you're 65 or if you're 55 and older and disabled, you'll get that card three months prior to your birthday. That's the way it's sent out before you are actually eligible. And eligible is 55 and, and older with a, a documented disability or you will have your age, which will make you eligible. Okay, so part, part A of that is the hospital entitlement. And everyone is actually entitled to that once they hit that 55 disabled or 65 years old and, you know, uh, they've, they've reached that point of retirement, okay? So with Part A, that's hospitalization, okay? okay? So we know everybody needs to have that, you know, the Part A. Part B is actually more for those who have worked in the workforce, and that with that, you can actually do doctor office visits. Um, it's a premium to that now. What's it's a part B? hundred and twenty-one dollars, but it actually comes out of the Social Security check. It comes out of their benefits. As these people who are actually eligible are also receiving Social Security benefits, whether disabled or mm -hmm. retired. Okay, so with that uh, Part B, there's a premium of a hundred and twenty-one dollars, which recently it went up from. 
from 2015. For 2016, it's $121. But those who were paying 104 for previous years, they're locked into that amount. I Anyone gotcha. who became eligible for 2016, I they're gotcha. actually paying the 121. So that's directly pulled out of their check unless they actually meet an income requirement, which is uh, they look at it individually and as a couple, the household, for Part B. Okay, so Part B will be, uh, we'll look at putting that up under extra help if their income is below like $1,000 a month. And mm -hmm. that 121 will actually stay in their check. They don't, you, they don't have to worry about paying because they get extra help from Social Security. Well, that's a lot of money when you're on a fixed yes. income. You're talking about over $100. Over $100 a month. So we do a lot of what's called Medicare, it's, it's, it's SMP, Medicare Savings Program. Okay. We do a lot of those applications through our office, and we get those over to Social Security, me, uh, well, Medicaid, the Medicaid over in Palisades. We mail them over there if people can't, you know, um, physically, you know, do that interview with them. We do all the paperwork, and we have a contact person over there that we get those applications to. What is D? What is Part D? Part D is actually an entitlement also for those who qualify for Part A and B. Part D is the prescription drug coverage. Okay. And there, it's not a co-payment to that, it's not a premium to that, but there are some upper scale Part D plans that some people do look at and want. Based on what, um, income, is it based on income, Part D? Part D is actually, it's, it's not based on income, it's based on eligibility. Okay. Like if you have Part A and Part B, that is, it's, it's more or less you can look at it as an entitlement for well, those who have A and B, you know. So A and B actually is a uh, a perk, I say D, because it's about 10 years ago, Part D did not exist, right. you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the government established Part B to help primarily solely just with prescription drugs to help get that cost down to the minimal as possible. So most people who do have Part D, uh, we actually, we try to get them in, we do the comparisons for these, and we tell people, our seniors, you know, this is something you don't want to do on your own because it's based off of your prescription drugs. It's, it's different variables that go in there, income, uh, the amount of prescription drugs you're taking, and we put that formula into a database and it kick out the cheapest plan for that individual. So it's not a right. cookie yeah, cutter yeah, type yeah. of thing, you know. Um, well, you're out in the community a lot. You're out um, participating yes. in health fairs and you're everywhere. I have a hard time catching you, by the way. Yes. I get you, <laughs> but I'm glad you're here today. So what are what is the state health insurance program, the information that you're disseminating? Uh, what does that program entail? Okay. And why do we need it? Why do caregivers need to make sure their parents know about it as well. Okay, so uh, basically the state health insurance program is a program that's established from the federal level from the Department of Centers of Medicare. Okay, so it starts from, from the top. Okay. okay, we work directly with Social Security. Um, and in, in actually in every county, in every county in Alabama, there's a triple A. A area of uh, you know aging yes. okay. department so you have those and we're actually managed by the commissioner of Alabama Neil Morrison who actually manages all triple A's across the area agent agencies okay. uh, and we basically we are advocates for those who are disabled or 65 and older who are entitled to these benefits, and we make sure that uh, the individuals get the best possible benefit package as possible, and we make sure that 
uh, the local insurance companies are not hounding them. Oh, really? They, yeah. What do you mean by hounding? Calling all day? Calling all day, mm -hmm. sending so you know, tons of literature, like, you know, in the mail. So confusing. So, and I mean, gets, my mom got yeah. crossed up with all this mail. I started interceding phone mm -hmm. calls and so on. She's not, we're not, no thank you, and hanging up. Right. Because she gets so mm -hmm. much information and it can be confusing. It so your program, so you actually assist the senior in making some decisions. Yes. And what we do is, is an unbiased decision making process, okay? Unbiased meaning? Uh, unbiased mean we do not partner with Blue Cross Blue Shield, okay. Okay. Cigna, United Health, Viva. But what we do though, we actually, we have the information in the federal database where we can look at according to, like I said, each individual medications, uh, what hospital they go to, all you can these pull variables. All that up. Once we put that in the, in the system, it, it tells us what is the best possible plan for that individual okay you know so that's where the unbiased come in at okay you know <laughs> so we're not just selling one thing or another so you know one product or another but of course you probably saw what your mom doing yeah. open enrollment yes, yes. like mm -hmm. she'll probably see all this information and it just sounds so like, overwhelming like, which one which one yeah and okay. so typically we tell people now this is something you can do you can do this at home but most most seniors do not fool with computers, okay? So this is the information that has oh, to go Oh, stop it. We've okay. got a new age of older people. <laughs> we do. We do. I mean, I have, I have seniors that I work with who have Facebook pages. So, you know, really? they are really, you yeah. know, some of them are computer exactly. savvy. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, we really do not deal with, and just like in your case with your mom, mm -hmm. we deal more with their children. Yes, acting. the caregivers, those of yes. us. Yes, we do. So, you know, with them, we can teach them how to go. It's Medicare.gov is where okay. you go. And it has Medicare. a wealth of information on there, that website. And there's a place for you to actually put all your personal information, your prescriptions, uh, which doctors you go to, okay. all those things, hospitals. And once you put that in, the federal government will actually kick out what's best for you. You know, whether it's Viva, whether it's United Healthcare, whether it's Blue Cross, they'll do that with your Part B as well as your Part D. They'll kick those, you know, they'll kick that information out for you to make the best educated decision as possible. But we actually, a lot of times people really don't, you know, have the time or they still have a lot of questions once they pull it up. So that's why the state health insurance program exists. We exist so that we can advocate on their behalf. We can do these comparisons and we can counsel them into making the best possible choices. So consumers have the opportunity to call you all, yes. right? Yes. To get the information and you all walk them through the process of what they may or may not need based on what you've already told me. We do, we, we walk them through the process and you know that- If they don't qualify, you'll tell them that too, right? I mean- If they don't qualify, and, and, and that's, that's a really good thing to bring up because some people, we're dealing with the baby boomers, of course, okay. you know, and, and for some of those uh, in their late 60s and 70s, they actually uh, are run into a problem where they were grandfathered into not paying into Social Security, okay? So if you didn't pay into Social Security, that means you will not qualify for, you know, like Part B. Like that won't be just a given that you can get that, but you'll get the Part A, but you won't get Part B if you didn't pay into it while you were working. Oh my goodness, so yeah. it comes back on you. Yes, and, and that's why we tell people that, you know, you really want to make sure that you, you know, talk to a trained and licensed counselor, insurance counselor my, like myself, so that you can actually know what's going to be the best decision for you. And then on the flip side of that, we have those who did work in the system uh, and they retired, like teachers with PHIP. Okay. You know, uh, the the steel companies like U.S. Steel, and they have their own kind of, their Medicare insurance retirement. They have that. 
And it's a, it's a lot of questions that goes along with that. And like I said, a lot of variables. So that's why we tell people, you've got to call your local Office of Senior Citizen Service Department okay. and ask for your SHIP representative so that they can break this down and explain it to you. So, you know, we get a lot of dis uh, disrupt people who actually uh, they retired from the school system and they think that their insurance with PHEP is going to be their primary, but it, it can't. Whatever you, when you retire, Medicare becomes your primary insurance no matter where you retire from. And that gets to be a really sticky situation because they think that we're trying to tell them that's what they got to do, right. but that's mandated up under the government. So mm -hmm. it's those kind of questions that we can, situations that we can actually help what with. What about the people who may be homebound or they live alone and they can't get out to get that information? Will you all be able to assist over the phone or they need to go to a local senior citizen for a health fair? You're everywhere. Yes. But I'm saying it was because sometimes we don't know, the inf we don't know. Right. We can't make a, an informed decision until we know better. Right. Um, exactly. But now it's no excuse because you have my show. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. And I'm at the end of the show, <laughs> right. you're going to have a phone number that you can call. There's no excuse. There's mm -hmm. no excuse for if you're a family caregiver and your loved one doesn't know anything about Part A, Part B, and it's a such thing as paying too much. I mean, I know cases where people are pay overpaid. Right. And They're overinsured. I mean, yes. And that's for those who actually retire with full benefits and they're leaving with, uh, a lot of them have really high premiums to pay monthly. Yes, yes. And, you know, they don't realize that with Medicare, we can put them in something the same or even better. What do you mean? Okay, so uh, say you retire from the school system and you have PHIP and you come to me and you're 65 years old and you'll say, well, Jay, you know, uh, this premium of $300 is, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep this up after okay. I retire. Okay. So my thing to you, if you can't afford that, then we need to go ahead and look at getting your benefits situated through Medicare. We can look at what's called Advantage plans. They're Medicare Advantage plan. So say you love Blue Cross and you don't want to come from up under that because that's what your PHIP is under. Okay, so we carry you over to Blue Advantage, and it gives you, okay. yeah, so you'll have your Blue Cross card, and that's what, you know, we try to explain to people. Medicare, you're going to have to, when you're 65, you're, you're going to get it whether you want it or not anyway. 65. 65, Okay, right. what's this about 62? 62, early retirement they can't get it until they're 65. Unless they're disabled. Okay. Now, okay. if they have a documented uh, disability through Social Security, they show us the proof of that, we can help them. So, you know, we can help them merge over to what's called an Advantage plan. Okay, so say you are taking care of mom and dad and you're not happy with what you have. Uh, we have to wait to enrollment periods to make changes is that the way it is, or can not you? Not necessarily. Can, what do you mean? And okay, you can you can change you can make a change like if my mom has this insurance, but you have your open enrollment periods. Mm -hmm. Many seniors think that they have to wait until that October or that December to make that change. Okay, and so they they probably they've heard all the hype with open yes, enrollment that's right. That's right. from October. That's right. You know, fourteen is mid October right. to right. December, first right. of December. That's not necessarily true, mm -hmm. and that's what we tell people when we go out. There are special election enrollment periods throughout the year. And, and for those who actually we sign up for, we take their original Medicare, the red, white, and blue card, we convert it to a, a Medicare Advantage plan, okay, and that's like Blue Cross Blue Shield and United Health, like I was talking about. Okay, those people, if they have, it's a special rating, like oh, they okay. they rate them like from one from one through five. If they fall up under one of those categories, we can actually change them any time throughout the year. They can actually change. They can make a change any time throughout the year, and you wouldn't know that unless 
you know, that was being advertised probably a lot, like open enrollment and all that. But there are special enrollment times throughout the year. And we go out and we actually get that information out to the citizens so that they can actually make changes if they need are to. Are you all charging for this service? I mean, are you are you charging us consumers, us people out here? No. <laughs> are you charging, you charging my seniors money for this information no. or is this is free information? This is huh. an entitlement under the Older's American Act. And this is a free service. Everything we do with Office of Senior Services is absolutely a free service. It's an entitlement for them. Yeah, because the first thing come out, come, that comes out of my mom's mouth is, you know, how much is it going to charge me? How much, is, how much does it cost, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, even when sometimes I bring her a meal, how much does this meal cost? She's so cost conscious. Yes. Being on a fixed things. income is, is tough. Yes, it is. It's tough. Yes. So. What kind of things are you doing? So you set up health fairs yes. in a community. Are these at the centers? Can these be at a church? Can these be at a local civic organization? Are you able to go out and about and disseminate this information? Yes. In the run? All it takes is a phone call and for them to contact the SHIP office or contact Office of Senior Services and someone will get the message to me. And I actually, I, that's what we do. We set up, we go out, we okay. educate. You know, we do the Q and A's. We do, you know, the sit. We do different educational seminars. We do okay. whatever it is that we need to do to cater to that audience for them to understand Medicare and their rights with Medicare. What would you say is the number one question, uh, or the most frequently heard question? that seniors and caregivers ask you when you're out? What is something that you hear all the time and you find yourself repeating the answer? Seniors, it seemed like one of the things that pop up a lot is the cost, like when I become 65, how much, you know, will this cost me to have my part A, part B, and they don't understand it's, it's gonna actually, and, and I can't say that it's a 100% free thing because not every senior has a low income, okay? Right. So that's, we go back to that $121 yeah. for the Part B that's automatically taken out of their check. Mm, mm, mm. So we, Every time you say that, I'm thinking, oh, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it is, okay. it is. Okay. But we do, we do a program through Medicaid, it's uh, extra help, and we fill out an application and that money is kept in their check, the 121. So cost is a big question. They want to know how much, yeah, you know, yeah. will they have to try to budget into their That's budget right. for That's this right. insurance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, cost, I would and say. And then if they're not satisfied with what they have, there's an appeals process, right? right? They can go mm -hmm. back, explain a little bit about the appeals process. So they call you up and they say, I don't like what I have and I didn't ask for that, I asked for this. And somebody gave me that, I've heard that a lot too. They gave me the yeah. wrong insurance. I signed up for this company and it's just, yeah. is there an appeal, is, how long does that process take? First, Usually on average. Yeah, well, typically when someone has, a, they're in an insurance plan that's absolutely not benefiting them, first of all, my question is always, who actually signed you up for this? And if it's doing open enrollment that they got this plan and an insurance agent actually signed them up for it, knowing that it was not gonna cover them 100%, that's reported to CMS. Okay. Okay, that's, that's really, that's, that's bad, you know. So once, and we make, we start making contacts to the insurance companies and to Social Security on their behalf. But we, we can get them changed out and uh, within a couple of days, that, that part of it won't be hard. We can fix that part, but it's gonna take a, most time a ship representative to Somebody. do that, or they're gonna hit a lot of brick walls trying to do it themselves. And you said that there are ship representatives in every county. In every county, yes. And there's a lot of Medicare fraud. There's a lot of, yes. we're not gonna even go there today. I'm gonna come back and deal with Medicare fraud and what are the top frauds and what they say, billions and billions of dollars are lost every yes. year. Yes, with, with uh, seniors' insurance benefits being stolen, yes, you will be surprised at how people actually are able to use, you know, a Medicare card. Oh, come on. So, I mean, if the doctor offices are not really checking okay. all the information, 
you know, they're that's what they're doing. They're actually, you know, using it, establishing new uh, primary doctors up under someone else's name. Well, I need you to come back. Will you agree? <laughs> I got you right yes. now. Will you come back and go into more detail um, about some changes that may be going um, yes. coming up real soon? I know you talked a little bit about those. Jay Jones here, yes, yeah. uh, the coordinator for the Office of Senior Citizen Services right here in Jefferson County. Great information. She's going to be out and about. Mm -hmm. At the end of the show, I'm going to put her information up so you can call her to speak with her directly, and that information will be on the screen. Hey, thanks for joining me today on the Caregiving Doctor Show. It's been a blast, and I, hopefully you've learned a lot of information as well. And we'll be back next week with more information. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on thecaregivingdoctor.com. Um, also, Jay Jones is going to be available in, in your area to do seminars and workshops. You have no excuse now for this information. Hey, remember, I care for you and your loved ones, too. See you next week. The Caregiving Doctors Show is brought to you by The Caregiving Kids Academy Little Leaders Big Hearts Lewis Harper Jr. and the Harper Agency Sandra's Clothes Closet Caregiving International Church and the Caregiving Kids Book Series Join us next week for another informative Caregiving Doctors show.